It smells. Heaven. Last Christmas seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah. Oh, what's that? What was that? How did you know there was something there? There was something crawling on my face. Yes, what it's was gone. It? And I will see you next time for more K's. Oh, I blew it. That was perfect tip top. I know, every time we watch a Star Trek, I think, oh, I'd love one of those. What are they T, called? Earl Grey, hot. What Replicator. They? Replicator. Yeah. Oh, come on. For more of Kay's handmade Christmas. In the kitchen. Oh, it's not, is it? <laughs> oh. Yoked colourwork jumper, size large. <laughs> would it work? Of course it would. Bing, bing, bing. It sounds like Avon calling. Yes. Do you remember that advert? Bing bong, hey, do you want calling? It's like that. We are. I can't wait we to are, see we this. Are, we are. It's, ooh. Yes. That's how it's funny. These are quite a bit, oops, dropped, dropped me cranberry. These you will, you will, you will. Who's that? Oh, Mrs. Doyle yes. from um, <laughs> Father Ted. Oh, hilarious. Welcome, everybody to the Bakery Bears video show. Oh my goodness, can you believe it's nearly December? I can. I can't. We're not that far away, are we? I'm stunned. What is it, 10 days or something? Something ludicrously close. Where precisely has the year gone? It, has, it does seem to have gone quick, but then also it does seem a long time since last Christmas somehow. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to the world of the air purifier. Oh my goodness. It is my new obsession. It is his new obsession. What I, what He's I like do is... Ross on Friends. Yes, yes. Except it's much quieter. There's an app for that. Can you believe it? So I can, I can log into the purifier, check the air quality, turn it off. I get a real thrill. Beep. But everyone, it's not just me, everyone's getting a thrill from turning it on in the morning because... Bing, bing, bing. It sounds like Avon calling. Yes. Do you remember that advert? Bing bong, hey, do you want calling? It's like that. The, there's a huge but, though, to all of this. Mm. Because, as some of you, long-term listeners may know, many years ago, I used to suffer badly from allergies. And then I had chemotherapy, and for some reason, they all disappeared. Mm. What are the benefits of chemo? <laughs> You, Plus, the other benefit is that you're still here, you could obviously. Take, you could take antihistamines. Well. Or perhaps you could try some chemotherapy. I've got a story about now, antihistamines. Now, chemotherapy it got rid of my allergies. This year, they came back with a vengeance. So, mm. we're like, what do we do? And I looked online and I saw something that said someone had tried an air purifier. So, we got one. Mm. It's like... It's really made a difference because we all kind of suffer a bit with allergies. And I've also been suffering with allergies since earlier this year. I don't normally have that much of a problem, or historically no. I haven't. I think the menopause might have something to do with that. So I've been taking antihistamines actually recently, and the they really though, help, however... Ever since we've lived in this house, we've always had issues. We have kind issues. of had issues, yeah. And it, it's so, a new property, you know. It's not an old house with damp or anything like that. But anyway... I've been taking antihistamines over the past few weeks and they've really helped, but even though they're meant to be non-drowsy, they absolutely knock me out. Like, I really think, zonk me out. I think what's happened is that antihistamines now, in the old days, when I was young, I used to have to take antihistamines and they'd make you a little bit like yeah, this did, all day. Did, yeah. Now, yeah. you take one, you're fine all day, but then you get to the night time and you're that's, like... That's exactly what I've been like. I've been absolutely cannot keep my eyes open at, at night time. I and think your highs are higher and your lows are lower yeah, when you're on antihistamines. Yeah, so I stopped taking them when we got the uh, Purifero about a week or so ago. And I've been fine. And I said, to, you know, the next day I was like, oh my word, I'm not exhausted. It's and genius. You know, I just feel normal. What again. I'm so excited about now I'm is free of drugs. Even in the, I call it the chemotherapy years when I was <laughs> when I was free of of allergies. I still used to have a problem in March and October. Yeah, just for a few weeks. Early and late. Grass palm and tree palm, I think it was. And now we've got this. I'm really excited to see how it potentially how it, affects. How it is, because it's definitely helped us within the I've house, not needed know? one antihistamine since I've had that machine on. No, you haven't. And you were really bad. I was terrible. It was back to the old days. Yeah, that, you know, like congestion in your nose and your eyes and... Everything you know, was going. Everything, yeah. A so, purifier, 
It's gone. Now look, Christmas is nearly upon us. Mm. And this year is going to be a little bit special. Because let's be honest, last year wasn't great. Wasn't great, was it? Yeah. Last Christmas was a little bit challenging. Yes. <laughs> For all For of us. For all of us, everywhere. And whilst, you know, things are still interesting out there, thankfully, not quite as interesting as they were. So we're very, very excited. And every year, what we do here at Bakery Bears Cottage is we take a look at what we do, don't we? Yes. And we try and do things better. Notch it up a bit. Notch it up a bit. Yeah. So this year, we started broadcasting in 4K. Yeah. So the best quality picture. We also produced our longest ever seasons of special shows. So mm -hmm. Walk in the Dales, 10 episodes, and My Favourite Colourways. First ever season of My Favourite Colourways, yeah. 10 episodes. Never done a season so long. That's all thanks to the fact that now the Baker Bears family has grown. Mm. Jen is with us. Our wonderful oh, we love Jen. knitability editor she's who has empowered. Godsend. She has, she's taken knitability to mm. heights never before seen and also freed us up to make those bigger series. Mm. But not only that, they have allowed us to turn our attention to a, a, a special that we put out last December the 4th, I think it was. Mm hmm. Kay's Handmade Christmas. Mm, do you remember I made candles and... Muesli. Muesli. The candles was, was my favourite one. Yeah, but I've still got some of those candles. You guys absolutely loved it. And Kay loved the, the whole sort of idea of it, didn't mm, you? And mm. as the years progressed, she started formulating in her mind. Because this can be a stressful time of year, can't it? Because you're mm. thinking, I need lovely gifts for people. Yeah. I need to have wonderful things to eat on my yeah. kitchen table. There's yeah. so many things. Christmas can be quite a pressured time of oh, year, can't absolutely. it? absolutely. Absolutely it can, yeah, yeah. So what we need is someone to take you by the hand and lead you to the promised land. That rhymed, it was like a song. And so today we're, I'm beyond excited because my goodness, have we gone to town mm. on Kay's Handmade Christmas? We have, we have. The, a series. A three-episode series yes. It's going to take us right through to Christmas. Yeah. Let me tell you, by the end of today's show, you're going to feel festive. You are. <laughs> you're, going to be, you're going to be wanting to get those decorations out. And actually, we've left a lot of... We've left them up in the kitchen. <laughs> because it just looks so lovely. Yes. And I tell you what, we've got workmen coming in next week to do some work, and they're going to think we're bonkers because we've got the Christmas decked out... Uh, the kitchen all decks out. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. There's a, you know, there's a tree. There's a sideboard. With some it's just a sideboard it. in the kitchen. Um, but it just looks so pretty. And it, it just seems silly to take it down and put it back up again in two weeks. So we're just like... And Brian, was like, oh, I'll just leave it. It's fine. So. Now, would you believe, because I couldn't, when Kay and I were chatting yesterday, that this is our last show before December? I know. You um, couldn't believe it yesterday when you worked. No, I, I because... kept, I kept thinking I've, I've lost some time here. It'll be, I think, the third of December. I know what it was. The next one. It, it, it was the allergies thing. I was out of it for a week. Well, yeah, I, I lost absolutely. a week. Absolutely, it's gone. I totally get that. Zonko. In 2015, we, on a whim, decided to do something. It was all off the back of. Uh, Christmas 2014 was a big year for us because that's when I got the all clear. Mm from cancer and mm. we you, you've all been so supportive we put out a one-off christmas card yes just a one-off little yes. video christmas card to thank everybody people went so crazy for that the year after we thought 2015 we did the very first bakery bears advent Advent calendar. calendar and as this is the final show before december yeah as we are now counting down until the launch of the bakery bears advent calendar 2021 we thought, perhaps, maybe you'd like to see a little bit of a teaser trailer yes. about what's coming up this Christmas.
the moment has come for us to start getting ready for the Baker and Bears Advent Calendar 2021. So from the 1st to the 24th of December, join us every day for a very special video. I'll be taking you on lots of little adventures in search of all the things that makes our Christmas special. You'll also get to spend lots of time with me for this year's festive mystery knit along. Our mission is to make this a Christmas season you'll never forget. So make sure you join us on the 1st of December 2021 for the start of this year's festivities. Now I'm really feeling festive. Oh my Thinking, goodness. Are you excited? We're excited. New graphics? Yes. The biggest ever knit along? Yes. An exclusive, completely exclusive festive episode of my favourite colourways? Yeah. And brand new music? Yes. Of which you're going to hear you will. a little bit later on in today's show. So we'll say no more about that right now, no. but you can look forward to that later. This is going to be a Christmas yeah. to remember. Yeah. And you, you, can join us you can, for that Christmas you can. for the princely sum of five dollars. Well, the equivalent of five US dollars. Five US dollars. Yes. yes. Because it's our silver, gold, and platinum patrons who will join us from the first to the twenty fourth of December. And on the twenty fourth of December, every patron will join us around the Christmas tree yep. for our Christmas message. Yes. Just like the Queen like the Queen. And at the same time, every patron will receive, so everyone who is a patron on Christmas Eve will receive Kay's first platinum collection pattern of yes. 2022. Yes, which is what we will have been knitting all through December through the yes. Advent calendar. Yes. There's a little mystery knit along. Mystery knit along leading up to the official launch of the pattern on the 24th of December. So if you are a patron at any level on that day yes. as our Christmas yes. gift from us to you to thank you for making everything that we do possible. You will receive the first platinum pattern of 2022. And let me tell you, I've seen it and it's pretty lovely. It's fun, it's fun. It's full of winter wonderfulness. <laughs> Recently, I seem to have been getting quite a few messages from people uh, disappointed sometimes at the fact that our tutorials oh. are only available to patrons to watch. And also as well, we sometimes get messages from people saying how disappointed they are that they can't get access to the platinum patterns. Yeah, yeah, we do. All I'll say to you is this. Folks, were it not for our patrons, we would not be sat here with you now no. doing anything. No. Kay wouldn't be designing. No. We wouldn't be making shows. We wouldn't be doing anything. And so what we have to do is we have to make our patrons, we have to make it enticing to be a patron. And, f and fun and enjoyable. You yes. Know, we, we want it's also to be... a wonderful place to be. Yeah, it, it really is. And, you know, that's my priority. I want it to be a, a fun and yes. um, safe and enjoyable. And just, you know, it, it's just such a lovely community that we've it is. got. And, and what, what, we, what we said on the very first day, episode 24, part two, mm. we said that we would always keep this two hours well yeah two hours it is this it's two hour much. show completely free which for all is. of you to watch yeah. which it is and into this show we put all of our best stuff yeah you know my favorite colorways walk in the dales Kay's handmade christmas starting yeah. today yeah. so we give you for nothing a huge amount but we have to reward our patrons like the exclusive episode of uh, the festive my favorite colorways which we're filming on friday we are folks we wish that we could make everything free <laughs> Just like it is on Star Trek. Can you? I know. Every time we watch a Star Trek, I think, oh, I'd love one of those. What are they T called? Earl Grey hot what replicator. They, replicator. Yeah. Oh, come on, scientists and everybody out there, invent a replicator. They're on the way. So Three, we don't need they're money They're on the anymore. way. Three D printers. That's true. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. But look, sadly, the world in which we live in requires us to make a living <laughs> from what we do. Otherwise, like I say, we wouldn't be here. So please do. If you're sat here and you're enjoying watching the show, we need you. Come and join us. Yes. Come and support the show. Enjoy Christmas with us and then get ready for what's going to be the best year of shows that we've ever done. 
because my new show is going to knock your socks off. No. But forget about my new show because Kay's Handmade Christmas is <sighs> like the business. So for us to get closer to Kay's Handmade Christmas, we need to do something very special. Yes, the moment has come for me to ask Kay Jones, what's on your needles? <laughs> Well, it's a Wizard I've of Oz bag. Got, it is the Wizard of Oz, Oz bag. I've got two new things to show you today. Amazing. Two new projects. And guess what? You've not got two I new haven't. projects, no. Oh, I have, we're not shocked by that, are we? I have two tried and tested wonderful Look, things. Everyone knits at their own pace, don't they? Exactly. It's all about... Do what works for you. Do what everyone. works for you and enjoy it. Yes. But in this lovely Wizard of Oz bag, can you remember when I made this? I made it a while ago. I really love it. It's totally not relevant to what's inside. That doesn't matter. But I really liked it, I thought, let's use that. Now. This is epic. This is very special. This is a very special pair of socks. This picks up perfectly on our Star Trek reference. So it does. Yes. It, now, imagine that. You could replicate. Oh, wow. I'd only have to knit one sock. Oh, no, no, no. That would be sad, though. You wouldn't want to do that. I don't know. I might sometimes only have to, like to knit one sock. That'd be great. Yoked colourwork jumper. Size large. <laughs> would it work? Of course it would. Yes. When... But what I decided to do, because I think we've mentioned a few times now that Brian, you really love Star Trek, in particular The Next Generation, which we're almost at the end of watching now, and she wants to move on to Picard then. Um... I decided to knit her a pair of Star Trek inspired socks. So I kind of looked in my stash and I looked around at dyers and just trying to find some yarn that would work and I just couldn't find anything that was just right. And then I thought, well I dye yarn, don't I? <laughs> I can I can dye yarn. So I've dyed up some minis and I'm knitting some socks using these minis. So I dyed up, how many, five colours. I did the three uniform colours. I did a black and then a silvery grey for the Enterprise. And I'm knitting some socks. So I'll show you the yarns first. So there's like a silvery grey, which I did add in a touch of blue because when you look at the Enterprise, it does seem to sometimes have a, a touch of blue. So we've got a silvery grey. Now the black didn't really come out fully black. I wish it was I wish it was more black. It's more of a dark grey. <laughs> but and I used a black dye. I used um landscape dyes. It's called Cura Wong, I think. I'd have no idea what that is. It must be an Australian reference. And I put loads in and I thought it looked black, but it's just more dark grey. But Bryony said it was fine, so. And then we've got the three uniform colours. Now, oh gosh, this was tricky. I actually blended these in the pot. I literally just got a few of the shades out that I thought would work. And I just kept looking at what was in the pot and just adding a bit of this and adding a bit of that. So I've, I, no, I couldn't ever replicate. Huh? I couldn't ever replicate this. I think it's okay. I don't think I've got them spot on, but I think they're okay. They're great. They're great. Do you think yeah. do you think you Star Trek people out there, do you think they look like the three uniform colours? I think they're close enough and Bryony approved them. So all together we've got those. I think it's quite Star Trek-y, isn't it? And it's on a sparkle base, so that works, doesn't it, for the space. And I am on the foot of the first sock. Now, I could put this on a blocker. Let's do that, because that'll be fun. I've not done that, actually. I haven't put it on a blocker yet. I had to do quite Hashtag a... Hashtag, I've dropped my cranberry. <laughs> Did you see that outtake at the start of the show? I said to Kay when I was editing the show, she is the queen of one-liners. <laughs> Last time, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> I sit there uh, chucking I, away. I, I she, she shouts across at me, oh, well, I'm glad I make you laugh. I sometimes get a bit punchy when I'm when I'm filming stuff because it just I get a bit like, I don't know. You're in the moment. You're yeah, excited. Yeah, I'm excited and yeah. a bit. So, yeah, I get, get a bit carried away sometimes. And... <laughs> I drop my cranberry. <laughs> <sighs> oh, right. So dear. here's the sock. Oh, oh, look at that. Now, that's a Star Trek sock. Is that epic? Yeah. I think it's quite epic, I could imagine isn't it? Commander Data knitting those. I know. That would be so cool. I'm actually, now I've seen it on the blocker, I'm actually really pleased with it. Now, I had to do a bunch of maths, which is not my strong point. 
so yeah, I had to do some maths because I had to make sure that when the I got to the toe, it wasn't like halfway through a blue stripe or whatever. I wanted it to, to have complete, to finish on a complete stripe. So I took a, a previous sock that I made for Bryony and I counted how many rows I knit in the foot and then worked out roughly how many I have for the leg and then I've got kind of a total and then I could do a bit of maths to work out the thickness of the stripes to make them fit and I managed to do it. So what I've done is I've got, so I'm doing cuffs, heels and toes in the enterprise colour and then I'm doing 10 rounds of the uniform and then four rounds of the black. The black is meant to be like the other bit of the uniform because they wear black trousers don't they? So yeah, that's what it is. It's 10 and then 4, 10 and 4. So yeah, that's that's my socks. And look how sparkly they are. Can you see all the sparkles? Look at that. Ooh, sparkly. I love them. I'm really pleased. And I'm what I'm even more pleased about is my needles totally match. That's amazing. The project. Yeah, yeah. I'm using the Addy It's Calibri. a new thing. I know. Match oh, your needles to your project. Sticking in. I'm using Addy Calibri, which come in blue, gold and red. Look. They totally match the sock. Could it be a more perfect project? Could it be a more perfect project? Absolutely. So I'm I'm not doing anything about the jog. I'll show you the other side. I haven't, there's like little gaps at the moment because I haven't woven these ends in. But I'm not doing anything about the jog because Brownie's not bothered. She won't even notice it. And it saves me having to faff around, slipping stitches and all that business. It's just easier. So I'm going with the jog. It doesn't bother me. So I'll just cast on 64 stitches, two by two rib, slip stitch heel, French heel turn, and then I'll do the umbrella toe. And they're just really, really fun. And I think I'll have enough yarn left over to maybe make some little fingerless mitts for her. I'll see how much yarn. I only dyed 20 grams of each of the uniform colors. I did give them a name. The gold is called something to do with Spot, because that's his cat, isn't it? Can you remember what I called them? I've got no idea. What colour does Riker wear? Red. So red is the Riker manoeuvre. Oh yeah. And then the blue I called something to do with Beverly Crusher. I can't remember what it was now because she's blue isn't she? Yes. Medical. That's my lovely socks but what I did when I dyed them up I thought I would need more of the black and the grey and actually the only one I might need more of is the grey because I'm not sure if 20 grams will be enough for cuffs, heels and toes on two socks. I think it might be, but we'll see. But I dyed up two extra of the black, <laughs> the dark grey and the silver. So I have got those as extra. So I'm sure with the extra of those and the leftovers of these, I'll somehow be able to make some little fingerless mitts for her as well. That'd be immense. Yeah. Or a hat. Now, I mean, she really wears fingerless mitts more than hats because she wears a pair every day to school as soon as it turns a bit chilly. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get these socks finished and I will probably now keep these for Christmas, I think. Oh, definitely. So as long as these They've are done... They've got to be Christmas yeah, presents. Yeah, I think she'll love them wearing these on Christmas Day. She'll absolutely love it. You know, I think it's, it's good enough and I really love them. So I really want to crack on with these now and make sure that they're done in plenty of time for Christmas so I can wrap them up pop them under the tree. It's a, a, an interesting point to note actually is whilst I loved Star Wars and, and, and still do. Yeah, always love Star Wars. I w w love Star Trek more. You watched all of Gen uh, The Next Generation, didn't you, when it was out? Yes. So that would have been early 90s, isn't yes. it? Yes, watched and loved. And I also never did, I never watched it. I, I loved Next Generation the, the, yeah, the most. And I, the I funny really thing is it. about the two universes the Star Trek universe and the Star Wars universe. Star Wars universe, great to watch on the films, but you wouldn't want to live there. No. Star Trek universe, oh, well. great to watch on films, and it'd be great to go live there. So yeah, they're my lovely Star Trek socks, so, ooh, can't Beautiful. wait. To, yeah, I'm really, yes. now I've seen them like that on the blocker, I'm really, really pleased with them. So Dan Jones. Yes. What's on your needles? It's the Sweetheart Kel. Oh, now we should say straight away, actually, I've, I've had quite a few messages about this cowl asking, because people have been going looking for the pattern, because Dan calls it the sweetheart cowl, I think it's a fair presumption to think that the pattern is there. It isn't yet. This is something that I just designed for Dan. Yes. But I will 
I will put out a pattern, but I can't do that until Dan finishes it for the photos and the yarn requirements and all the rest of it. So it'll be out when it's out, you know. 2023. No, it'll be sometime <laughs> next year. No, it was me I was ribbing there, not you. Yeah, I know. I'm just telling you, it will be sometime yes, next year. it will because I'm nearly finished. You are. I'm on the eighth row of the final colour work section and then all I've got to do is knit the ribbing. So, I mean, I'm really not far off at all. No. And, oh my goodness, this has been the best project ever for my colour work knitting. And I shall tell you for why. Uh, fingering weight, absolutely brilliant. Because I will always aspire, I don't think I'll ever get there, but I'll always aspire to knit a fingering weight jumper. I don't think I'll ever get there because I'm not, I'm just not gonna push the speed ever. Because as Kay said at the start of the show, knitting's about enjoyment. Mm. And, you know, we're very fortunate, aren't we, to live in a time when knitting can be all about enjoyment. It's not like, you know, I need to knit myself a colour jumper so I'm not cold. No. So you'd need to do it fast. So I don't want to push the speed because I think that would just change the way that I felt about my knitting. And that's such an important thing to me. It's, you know, such a special thing for me, mm. the relaxation, mm. all the things attached. But I'll always have in my mind how cool it would be if at least I had the skills to knit a colour jumper. And so being able to do a whole colour project like this, such a long one as well. Mm. And the, the feeling of progression and growth through the project is just vast because, you know, this section here is the same as this section down here. And I found it quite challenging the These first time dots, I did it. This dot section up here looks fantastic. Look how this dot looks like it's missing. Yeah, I know. And that's because it's where the yarn colours are similar. Yeah. The idea of having this kind of look to the cowl, Dan really loves this, where you just get a sort of faded look, is because it's, when we say sweetheart cowl, it's reflective of the sweetheart abbey. Yeah, where we visited. We visited. It's yeah, and gorgeous. it's like it's a ruin. Yes. So, you know, bits of it are missing and bits of it you can see. Yes. So this is that yes. in cowl form. Yes. And also it's the hearts in the central white yeah, teeth. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's just to. where the colours are so similar in the two yarns. But now I've got well and truly out of the dots, you can see, I mean, compare the dots to there and there. Yeah, these yeah, are puckering so, like crazy, yeah, but and so these are much better. smoother. It's just so great. I've just, I've adored every minute of this, and now I'm right at the point where I'm starting to panic about the future. <laughs> I'm I'm really hoping you'll have enough in one skein of this contrast. We have got another one, oh, but, right, in, okay. but in terms of writing up the pattern, yeah. it will be very convenient if what you need is two skeins of fingering weight. So all you've got left to do in this I've is... I've got six rounds of... Six of, of this last section, and then you've just got this bit here, which is... A little bit of ribbing so he's got this much to do and a few rounds here so it he might have enough this i reckon there's 20 25 grams still there this I think now, he'll now have enough. what you've turned this into now is the ultimate game of, of yarn, yarn chicken. chicken it would be you know and what i was thinking actually is if it is a little bit short i could always reduce these number of rounds here yes. if i just take one round Yes. Out of the dividing section, yes. that would probably be enough. But with any luck, it'll have enough. Yeah. So please make sure you do that. I should do my utmost. <laughs> this is the... Reggio Merino Yak. Yeah, I always want to try and say the big long word beginning with an S. Oh, I can't but say But I'm that. not going to try. Because I'll, I'll say it no, I'll say it no, all I'm wrong. No, I'm not going to try. Not in that. And that's Merry Christmas, Harry. M Happy Christmas, <laughs> Harry. There it is. In, it's, it's beautiful. In all its glory. I think it's going to look amazing on... Yeah, and I, think, I can't wait to block it because that really is going to transform I think, it. I think a dude could wear this as well as a... Absolutely. Yeah, it's unisex. Yes. Yeah, I like it. So, sweetheart Cal, well and truly on the way. Mm. Will he have finished it by the time... I mean, there's a possibility. Maybe he'll finish it this year. Maybe I'll get it as a Christmas present. Well, if I'm going to finish it this year... That would be rather fantastic, Then that it? would mean that I would be showing this in our show coming out on the 17th of, of December. December, which would be... Yeah. Slap bang before Christmas. That's a month pretty much from now, so you've got a month to finish it. What else is on your needles? Right. Oh, I'm still knitting on this. I've Ooh. been working on a blanket. Joy upon joys, I have been crocheting. With no shoulder issues? No, because... You've been a good girl. Yes. I'm being really careful and I'm not being silly, you know, I'm not going silly on it like I did last time. Even though... 
I, when I start working on it, it's all I want to do. And I just want to sit there, do nothing else, watch lovely things and just crochet all day. But I know I can't do that because the next morning I'll wake up and I'll not be able to move because my shoulder will have frozen. So what I've been doing oh, is... frustrating, isn't it? It is really frustrating. And I'm sure lots of us out there suffer with this same thing that, you know, you want to do these things so bad, but you know that your body just can't hack it. Yes, so this is the V-stitch blanket that I'm working on. I'll show you where I'm up to, and I've done quite a lot. Look, I think when I last showed you, I was somewhere down here. Wow. I definitely hadn't started this brown stripe, I'm certain, so I was somewhere around here. And I've done all of that since, look. Those yarns look amazing. Don't they look fabulous? And, oh. and, and that, I mean, that says everything. And it's it's not often of that I would say something like size. that. Lap size. Thank you very much. That That's would be okay. lovely. That's okay. Yeah, it's like a lap size blanket. Don't want your shoulder freezing up. I know. And this is V-stitch. I'll hold it close in a second so you can see. But I used a tutorial on, on YouTube from Blossom Crochet. You know, so go ahead and have a look at that if you want to know how to do it. It's really simple, honestly. I think it's actually simpler than a granny stripe. Wow. The reason I think it's simpler is because the edges are... There's less thinking involved on the edge. Because with a granny stripe, it's slightly different, isn't it, on each edge. But with this, it's the same. And it's really simple. So the stitch basically, let me hold it close. I'll fold it over and hold it close and I'll tell you sort of what the stitch is. So if you see, can you see all the little V's? And they're stacked up. So the little V's are made up of, it's a treble. This is English terms. Oh, I don't know what that is in American terms, but I'm all, whenever I talk about crochet, I'm always t talking about the stitches in terms of the English. So it's a treble. Each little V is a treble, a chain, and then another treble all into the same space. And you just do that all the way along, working into the top of the V from underneath. And then when you get to the very edge, it's just a, you just work a treble into the last chain of the three chains from the row before. So you work a treble into that and then you do three chains, turn and then carry on. It's so simple. And what I do, when I do those three chains, before I turn, I put a little bulb marker, a light bulb marker through the third chain so that when I get to that end again, that stitch is marked for me. And then there's no guessing as to which is the third chain. Because sometimes, especially with the lights not very good, I'm like, which is the third chain? So I just put a little light bulb marker through it and there's no questioning. So this is all fingering weight yarns. And I'm using a three millimetre hook. And the yarns are from the fantastic yarn calendar, if you like, that I got for my birthday from my lovely friend Sarah. She made me up wow. all of these minis. I've showed you before, but I'll just grab a couple. She wound them beautifully. Oh, and you, you were, were, you tried a few different things, didn't you, before you settled on this project? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was doing a, what was it called? Linen stitch. I was doing a linen stitch blanket, wasn't I? But the, the sides were doing this weird thing and there was like a ripple at the bottom. It just wasn't entirely square, which I think is a common thing with that stitch. So I ripped that out and I'm now doing this V stitch and it's just fantastic. I love it. You know, if you love a granny stripe blanket, I think you would absolutely love this. Because it's just something different from a granny stripe, isn't it? I love the granny stripe, I've got one on the go. But this is just a change from that. It's a bit different, but it's really simple, really relaxing. You know, once you get into the rhythm of it, you, you can more or less do it without even thinking about it. You know, it's that sort of a project. So yeah, I've got all of these little minis. They're all about 10 grams. And like this one is a Mr and Mrs Rabbit yarns. And she's wound them beautifully. And I, I actually numbered them as, I could, as they came out, as I opened them, because I got 50. So I numbered them because I was gonna put them in in the order that Sarah gave them to me, but 
part of the enjoyment for me for a project is choosing the next colour. So I let myself off with that, that requirement that I'd enforced on myself. And now I'm choosing the colours, so I go into the bag, which is just fantastic, look. No? and I choose the next colour. And what seems to have been happening, and this was not deliberate, is that I seem to do a sort of brighter one and then a less bright. Brighter, less bright, bright, less bright. You see what I mean? And that's just happened. I didn't do that on purpose. But now, I, now, I, now I've seen that, I really like it, so I'm gonna see if I can maintain that through the, the whole blanket. This one that I'm putting in now, it's, it's an unknown yarn, so I don't know what it is. And isn't it typical that the one yarn that I'm like, oh, what's that? Don't know what it is. It's really pretty and it's, it's an unknown one. And it's, I'll show you how it's working up into it. Whoops, it's the, the one that's at the top there. Lovely speckly, sort of like a mushroomy base with then speckles of like a cinnamon colour, really pretty and it's not, it's quite rustic, it's, it's definitely not a standard sort of 75-25, it's really interesting and really nice and plump, it's lovely, at first I thought oh is that going to be too thick for it to work in but it's absolutely fine, it's totally fine, it's really pretty, I love it. So it's, it's just a joy, it's just a joy. It's an absolute joy to work on this. I really, really love it. I'm entirely grateful to have all these beautiful minis to work on. And I've, what I've, I've just been doing one or maybe two rows in the morning and that's it. And then I put it down, force myself to put it down. But I'm loving it. So I really recommend if you fancy doing something with lots of little minis, get yourself over, find a tutorial for the V-stitch and Cast on, no, what is it? What do you do with crochet? Start. It's really <laughs> funny what you said about how y you can't do any more than two rows. I think what that does is, in, in a sort of nutshell, it sums up the challenges between being young and being old. Because when you're young, I found that mm. I could eat anything. Yeah. I could go out yeah. and do anything. Yeah. I could stay out really late. Yeah. And then you just get up the next day and everything's fine. And then as you get older, there starts to be repercussions. Yeah. And it's so frustrating, isn't it? Eating is another great example, and I would guess most people would get it the most if you're talking about eating. Yeah. Because, you know, it's so lovely to think we've had, as we said on the last show, we've been entertaining a few people recently and had a few young people around and seeing them just throw anything down yeah. and not have to think about it. Yeah. You're really jealous. And similarly, it would be so nice to think you know, just like tucking into a, a big greasy pork pie, <laughs> yeah. it would be lovely. That's your big, that, that's, oh, that's your crafting equivalent pie. of a greasy pork pie. Well, that's a bit insulting. <laughs> that's a little bit insulting, I've got to say, to my beautiful blanket. But actually, the person who gave me these yarns, I know she likes pork pies. Yes, yes. So and that works well. But it wasn't greasy. No, it was. It's a beautifully made pork pie from yes. a very posh butcher's. Where I'll actually be taking you to. Yes, oh, I will. Yes. You'll be seeing the window of this wonderful butcher's in the Baker Bears Advent mm. Calendar 2021. Mm. Oh, yes. It is immense. It used to be our local butcher's, effectively. No, and it might. I really want it to be our local well, butcher's again we one need day. to make it so. Yeah. Make it so! Make it so! It's the Star Trek episode. All you Trekkies out there are going to be loving this. Engage! <laughs> He's the coolest, isn't he, Picard? So, speaking, of, speaking of cool, I mustn't get my markers. Not markers, you know what I mean. It's the amazing star mittens. Oh yes, these are so cool. Mm. And thank you to all the people who suggested I put my <laughs> on the <laughs> top. Look. Just hold on a minute. You... Oh, the washi tape. Yeah, yeah. People said, why don't you put your washi tape above, not below? I do put my washi tape above. Well, everyone at home, when they saw that I'd been putting my washi tape underneath and oh, that I I've been finding it difficult. I spoke last time. Oh, about how I put my sorry, washi tape I, underneath. I didn't acknowledge what you were doing. I was saying how I put my washi tape underneath and then I find it difficult because I can't see what's come before and I find it difficult to read my knitting. I spoke about that at length last time and you all said, and Kay knew already, the thing to do is not to put it below, stick it above. And then you can see what's below. Because it doesn't matter what's coming next, does no. it? You, you want to see what you've done so that you can... If you, you don't want to, to see what's coming next. You can read your knitting below, Because if you see too far what's coming next, it confuses you. Yeah, on, yeah, so it yeah. sort of works on, in, on so many ways. But yeah, as I don't want to say too much because it's a paid-for pattern, but as you can see there, yeah. 
I asked my lovely daughter for some washi tape and she happened to give me washi tape that matches the pattern. It's exactly the same colour. I said actually it would be more helpful if it was a contrasting colour. We, we laughed so much I said, to be honest, I said though, darling it's fine. Thank I quite like the fact that, that it matches because it doesn't stand out. <laughs> Because normally on projects, like the washi tape's like, whoa! She's got like 50 billion trillion washi tapes and she chose that one. There's a creative brain who is obsessed by colour. <laughs> like mother, like daughter. Oh, yes. So, I'm knitting... Oh, much has happened! Oh, gosh, I don't know if I did this right. I feel like I've done it wrong. But, you know, we'll see. Well, I, well don't I say that. I totally winged it. I didn't know what I was doing. Look, I can pick up those stitches... It, well, first of all, they'll be easy to pick up. And it's the ones I cast on. But I've never done. I've never seen a thumb gusset done like this before. So it's probably very common in this type of a mitten, a colourwork mitten. But I've never done it before. So it asked you to cast on a bunch of stitches over where you'd taken them off on the bottom. You cast the same number on over the top, and I'm like, I've never done that before. And you had to do it in alternating colours. Yes, because the cast on was a two colour alternating cast on. Blown to my, blew my mind. Well, she did it straight off, which was great. And a, a bit like when we did the underarms on the jumpers, because health self contained knitted thing. I was watching very closely. I'd just never done it before. So I don't have a problem. And I think it's important for all of us when we're doing something we've never done before. If you can ask for help, do. Mm. Because then you can learn. F f you can learn from it, can't you? And you can learn to do it the right way. And uh, Kay did it, and it looks great. Mm. Here it is. And the, the stitches there are obviously easy to pick yeah, up. Yeah, because they're But important. the ones over the top, you know, I can see pick-up points. As long as it's just how neat it will look when it's picked up. But, you know, it's a learning thing, isn't it? And I well, it's a learning I thing, but really also how looked, neat it will look. I really should have... If your hand's in it like that... It's on the inside. Yeah. It's on this side, isn't it? So... so the outside is the, is the problem area. I wonder if I can get these on my Ooh. hand. The other thing was, we, we think they're a tad small, don't we, but... So I probably need... That's the wrong hand. Oh, sorry, it is. <laughs> so I probably... <laughs> you're not going to get your thumb in there. Uh, I probably need to adjust my needle size. Oh, actually, it's all right. The, the only problematic... The only problematic point is this cast on. Ah, oh, right, OK. This bit's totally fine, actually. Oh, but it's quite good putting them on my hand. Look! Oh, look! Look at that. Oh, she's well into it now. Oh, amazing. That's amazing. Oh, is it? Yes. That's Who else thinks that's fantastic? I feel a bit overwhelmed. Look at that side. I really, actually, turn your hand around. Yeah, yeah. I love this side. Yeah. I love this side. It's like a, a, it's like a medieval floor yeah. in a monastery. It is. I mean, it's just brilliant. It's but also fantastic. as well, I think this going into this mm. just rocks. But also as well, I really like... Oh, it's nice and warm. Can you... Oh, no, that side's fine. Do you want me to just take my hand off? If, if you were dating, you'd be able to. What? You can take... Look, look here, look here. Turn it a bit that way. Look, 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 look at the dotty bits here. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. It's cool. There's so many cool elements to this mitten. She's beautiful. a genius. Really I really beautiful. like this designer. I think as well, once we've blocked it, this, you know, it Veronica Forsberg, star. Yeah. But it's not star on Ravelry. No. It's star net or something or other. It's, it's the... The pounds are linked in the show notes below. It's the language. Where's she from? Is it Norway? So it's going to be something like that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Sorry, that I don't know. Veronica. No. But Fantastic. Just, it's good. Pat's so easy to read. The yarn's lovely to work with. The yarn is the gorgeous Black Swan DK Falkland Islands Merino, two fifty gram balls, mm, which we think will be plenty. And the colours go together just beautifully. Really lovely. And you know, I, I didn't have that sort of moment of disengagement with the project, which mm. I can tend to have when someone has to help me, and that's normally when I think I know what I'm doing. But thumb's you told really me that fun. I don't. Stripy thumb, <laughs> yeah, it's really fun, isn't yes. it? Yes, and the increases. Yeah, the increases, the increases were great. increases are cool. Are they? Yeah. Sure. Here, look. You can barely see them. Woohoo! So it's brilliant. I feel like Elf. <laughs> so my passion for these continues to grow. What I'm not doing is I'm not rushing it because I find that this is when I, I, I tend to make mistakes. I don't think I necessarily rushed here, but you can see right in the middle there, there's a great big loose stitch. Which I is bet I can go inside really and tighten that up from yeah. the inside. 
I know why that happened because it was on the changeover point mm, and mm. I just messed it up. I got it right further up, but on that one, I really didn't do a very good job. Mm. It's quite challenging in the sense of the fact that there's quite a few areas where there's quite long runs, mm. but that's cool. I've definitely made some mistakes on it, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> It's my first ever attempt, and you know Kay was impressed, and that's I think what matters. It's fabulous that I couldn't do as good a job as that. That's what matters, and you know me, don't you, viewers at home? You know me. This is my first attempt. Imagine what my fifth amazing, attempt is going to look like. Colour, and the best it's so part pretty, is, so pretty. The best part is, it's not like a jumper. It's not like a jumper where you know you get one go. You get two goes every you time. Get two goes, so you can sort out that cast on and the next one, and the next one. Yeah, the next one will be less. Imagine the one after next. It'll be like, oh, no, be perfection. What else is on your needles in your lovely festive bag? Oh no, this is in a lovely festive bag from my friend. But that's Sasha. my. That's the type of festivity that you want, not in your face. No. Yes, sometimes you may want it in your face. Well, it. But it Subtle. It is festive, but I use it all year. Subtly it's, festive. I don't think it's so festive that... It's offensive. <laughs> somebody's going to come along and say, why are you using that project bag in May? Yes. I don't think that would happen. No. Right, this is my forfeit socks. Woohoo! Yes! Where's my crown? I know. Put it on. Thank you all for your lovely messages. <laughs> the victor. Dan won. And the forfeit that I had to partake of was to knit him some socks. I'm using Hot Socks Sakura, Sakura, well, however you want to say it, and you can see the colour there. This colourway shade number is number four. And the reason I chose this colour was because it reminded me of a pair of socks that I made you years ago yeah. from a no makers yarn. Uh -huh. Which was called Eddie Griswold. Oh yes. And it's sort that's of totally it's, cool. yeah, it's blue and cream and white. I think they're slightly holy. They are. Oh, my heart sinks. I know, but this it look it just reminded me of that. We've got the blue and the cream and the brown, and then there's some lovely green in there as well. And can you see? I didn't even wind it into a cake in my eagerness to cast it on. So I'm just pulling from the outside of the ball. So I cast on a pair of socks and Dan allowed me, he took pity on me. That's for the heels, I'll show you that in a minute. It's cashmere. I know, it's beautiful and I wish, Sorry, I, wish I was, I wish this was in that base. I'm just going to hold it. Because this, the, this one, the Sakura Sakura is just the 7525. Sakura Sakura. Cherry blossom, I don't want to blossom. offend anybody you now by pronouncing just it pick incorrectly. One and stick with it. I'm going to say Sakura. Okay. It's a 75-25, so it's quite rustic. It's similar to an opal, feels kind of like that. Knitting up perfectly fine. However, I bought a 50 gram skein to use as a contrast for the heels. And it's, Can I hold it? it's gorgeous. The base is this one, Hot Socks Pearl with cashmere. And it's so soft. It's so soft. It's gorgeous. It, oh, I wish, oh. I, you know, I really wish... I've never touched a yarn before, I just want to I keep know. touching. It's beautiful. I really wish I was knitting the whole I feel like Gollum and the ring. This. And this is 75-25%. So it's a 75... Oh, I said that all wrong. <laughs> no, do it again, it's brilliant. Seven, what did I say? 75-25%. So what's the 20? That's nylon. What's the 5? Cashmere. Amazing. Everybody knew what I meant. I was trying to just save time. So it's 75, 20, 75, slash, 20, slash, 5. <laughs> Work that out, everyone. That's going to be my contrast heels. Oh, I told you I'm a bit punchy. 75, And 20, I'm not even on antihistamines right yes. now. So no, no, it's not the antihistamines that make you punchy. It's probably my it's your, injured foot. It's your enthusiasm for I've life. I've injured foot and I can't walk you at can the moment. You can walk. You can walk. You would have been fine today. bruised heel... Thing going on. Dan You'd just have been fine today. Says, but it was get on with it. <laughs> anyway, over my many years of running, I've learnt from certain things what you should move with, and other things what you should. I could barely walk this morning. Yeah, and that was because of the issues we had yesterday. I know. Can you believe it? Yesterday we went to. I mean, I can't believe this. It's no, weird. It's weird. I went to a sixth form open evening for our daughter Bryony, and. We had to sit listening to the worst public speaker in the history of the world talk 
for way longer than she should have done. But yeah, we had to go up and down loads of stairs because we were in Bryony School and looking around all the... They've got new sixth form facilities. And it was just all a bit... I just got a bit overwrought by it all, by the whole being around a lot of people and it was just weird, but great. And the sixth form is brilliant. And also the fact that she's going into sixth form because I remember being in sixth form like it was yesterday. That's the weird thing. So old. Anyway. That's how she injured her foot. That's how... Well, she no. have, you injured your foot not tying your shoes tight enough and going I, out for a walk. I don't tie my shoes tight enough, Dan's told me, because I don't like tight shoes. So that's what's caused my injury, so... I've been well, told off. Well, no, you haven't been told off. Just... I have been told off. No, no, I think, I think the issue probably came from the fact when you're bedding in a new pair of shoes... It was a new pair as well. There's nothing wrong with those new shoes. No. There's nothing wrong with them no. at all. But when you bed in a new pair of shoes, it happens to me all the time. Yeah. You, you'll pick up an injury or two. Oh, no. But the best thing about the injury that you've got is every book I've ever read about... Well, not every book, every article I've ever read in Runner's World about this injury is... Every time you get it, it makes you stronger. Right. So, so I'm going to have a stronger right foot, everyone. Her, your right okay. heel is going right to be heel is a gonna joy be like, to behold. You know, it's going to be like a Marvel superhero yes, yes, heel. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, back to my socks. Yes, I'm going to use this navy blue as the contrast. And this is shade number, right. Hot Socks Pearl number nine. So it's going to have very posh, lovely heels. So I'll show you where I'm up to. I've only really just cast on. This is where I'm up to. And Dan's allowed me, I started saying I think before I got distracted. Dan's allowed me to do a broken rib. <sighs> so I don't have to do a fully ribbed rib. So I'm doing a knit one, pearl one for the cuff. And then it's a three by one rib. So knit three, pearl one for one round and then knit the next round. So it's a nice broken rib and this is where I'm up to. So it's going fine. Looks really nice, I think, the yarn. Yeah. Really pretty. I like the sort of blurriness of it. Really sort of graduated with the colour changes. I think it's really nice. And I'm using, for these, I'm using the... What are these? Nitpix Sunstruck DPNs. So it's the birch ones, but they're just the pale wood colour, which I really like because I like the Knit Pro Harmonies, but they're very dark. It's, it's a dark needle, isn't it? And I really like these because it's essentially that needle, but it's just really pale. So it's much more pleasant to knit, I think. You're not sort of squinting to see your stitches when it's in the darker sections. So I'm just going to work away on these. I'm not in any particular, there's no deadline for these, they'll just be done when they're done. Yeah. But yeah, nice, you know, nice yarn, beautiful Hot Socks Pearl, it's gorgeous. I've not knit with it yet, but it feels fantastic. So, lovely little project. Ladies and gentlemen, as we've discovered, it's nearly December. This is a time rich with sort of memories of poignant, lovely food and mm. wonderful handmade gifts. So to get us in the mood and to perhaps inspire us a little bit as we sally forth into Christmas, I'm delighted to introduce the very first in a series of Kay's Handmade Christmas. Christmas is about traditions, from the decorations we have to see on our tree to the wonderful things that adorn our festive table. These are the things I look forward to the most at this time of year. Those special flavours that only seem to appear at Christmas time. In this special series I'm going to show you how to make some of my favourite festive recipes. Together we'll create the flavours that make our Christmas truly special. Welcome 
everybody to Kay's Handmade Christmas. I'm back in the kitchen, I made it, made it back in the kitchen, I'm so excited and I even got a new apron. Now I say a new apron, I even got a apron because I don't wear aprons. I've had a lot of comments about this actually over the, the, the sort of years and, and episodes that we've been putting out baking segments because I, I don't wear an apron and a lot of people have commented on that and it's purely just because I find them a bit constricting I just feel awkward wearing an apron it's the same reason I don't wear I don't like wearing rubber gloves in the kitchen and I do because I have to but I don't like it and I, I just don't like that feeling of extra clothes on me <laughs> but it's a special occasion it's Christmas, so I got myself a lovely Robin adorned Christmas apron. So I'm all set to start doing a little bit of festive baking. So what we're gonna be doing today is actually a, it's a staple of Christmas. It really, certainly for us, it's not Christmas unless you've got a good supply of these. Now, I've made it a little bit, Dif not difference probably the wrong word but I'm enhancing it let's say this on this episode because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making some mince pies however before we make the mince pies we are going to be making the mince meat now don't be alarmed if you don't know what mince meat is because I know that this is it's very traditionally English this this recipe but I think it's fairly well known worldwide but you might not know what mince meat is it doesn't contain actual mince no, there's no meat in it historically it did and that's why it's called mince meat it was a way of preserving meat but these days there is no meat in it so don't worry about that and actually my recipe is vegetarian um, you can actually put something in it that makes it non-vegetarian but I've swapped that out because I wanted it to be a vegetarian recipe so that it is fine for you know lots of you lovely vegetarians out there as well so yes we're going to be making the mincemeat first of all don't worry about that it's re honestly really easy there's a lot of ingredients, but it's not difficult. So we're gonna make the mince meat and it makes such a huge difference to the mince pies. If you think you don't like mince pies, then I would really recommend that you try making your own mince meat and you might find that actually you do really like mince pies. It's the same thing I find with Christmas pudding. I think a homemade Christmas pudding is in a different league to a bought Christmas pudding. So it's, it's the same kind of thing. So if you think you don't like mince pies, I would really recommend that you give this a go. And the pastry is gonna be slightly different as well. So that's very exciting. So that's enough waffle from me. It's time to have a little look at what we're gonna to need to make our delicious festive treats. Now, first of all, I'll say this recipe that I'm using, it's a Mary Berry recipe. The reason I chose a Mary Berry recipe as opposed to Delia, because I have made Delia's mincemeat before, the Mary Berry recipe uses much less apple. Now, apple is the thing in mincemeat which can cause the storage of mincemeat to be problematic because the juices in the apple can cause the mincemeat to sort of ferment. So there's much less apple in this recipe. And then also what Mary Berry does is she uses butter instead of suet. Now traditionally, the fat element of mincemeat is beef suet. I have made mincemeat using beef suet before and eaten many mince pies that have it. But Mary Berry says that she prefers the flavor of butter and it also makes it vegetarian. So I'm swapping the suet out for butter. Now you can get ve vegetarian suet, you can get vegetable suet, so it's entirely up to you. When I talk about the butter, if you want to use suet, just swap that out with the butter. So what I will do is I will whiz round the ingredients and just let you know exactly what we're gonna be using for the mincemeat. We've got currants, we've got raisins, and we've got sultanas. Now these three, which kind of look the same in the bowls. They're all dried grapes, but they're just different varieties of grapes. So the currants are tiny. These ones actually are Zante currants, 
they're really tiny ones and they're really lovely. They're softer, I find they're softer than other types of currants. And then you get raisins, which I think are sort of like the next biggest and probably the one that everybody knows the best. And then sultanas, I think these are the biggest and the softest for me. Now sultanas, I think in other countries, these are sometimes called golden raisins and they can be much paler than this. So whether you find them as sultanas or golden raisins, that's what they are. So that's the three dried fruits there. And then we've also got some dried cranberries, which I think is a lovely addition. These are quite a bit bigger than the, sort, the other three dried fruits. So what I will probably do is just roughly chop these just to get them to the same size as the others. We've then got some mixed peel. Now this is, it's basically the rind of an orange and a lemon that's been preserved. You normally buy this in supermarkets already chopped like this and it's just called cut, cut mixed peel. But what I've done is I've actually bought it as the whole mixed peel. So I've got a bit of the orange left here. You can see it's basically just the skin of an orange that's been preserved and it's sort of preserved in sugars and things. The reason I bought it whole is that it just tastes so much better than the already cut. This, I mean, the smell just coming off it now, it's, it's amazing. It's so much better. So if you can find it in the whole pieces, I would really recommend it. All you have to do is just grab a piece and get some kitchen scissors and just cut it into thin slices it's a bit of a sticky job, but you know, that's fun. Get sort of your kids involved with it or grandchildren. I know it's scissors, but as long as they're not really small children and you're supervising, then they'll be fine. And then you, so you cut them into strips and then just grab a couple of strips and then just chop them into tiny bits. You want them about the same size as the currants. You want everything really, all of the fruits to be kind of the same size so that everything cooks together and just chop them up. The other advantage of doing this is the smell is so amazing. It just smells so beautiful. It's just that festive citrusy smell is gorgeous and it does make such a massive difference to the flavour of your mince pies and your minced meat. And then we're gonna need some almonds. These are whole blanched almonds. Skin, skin is off and they're whole and I'm gonna chop these up again and again just chop them up into you know, tiny little pieces. And then the extra things we're gonna need is a small cooking apple. This is a Bramley. You want a cooking apple, not an eating apple. Eating apples are too sweet for this and they just have a different texture. Cooking apples are the things that you need. So just a, you know, just a small size. These tend to come massive. You can get absolutely enormous cooking apples, but just a normal sort of eating apple size, but it needs to be a cooking apple. We've then got a lemon, and this is an unwaxed lemon. We always buy unwaxed lemons because it's the zest that we're gonna be using in this, so unwaxed lemon. And then butter. I'm using butter. If you want to use suet, you can do that. And then the final things are the kind of flavorings, the spices. So what we've got is ground cinnamon and mixed spice. If you don't know what mixed spice is, it's basically a combination of all different sort of festive spices. You get ground cinnamon, ground coriander, caraway seed, ground nutmeg, ground ginger and cloves. So it's all of those Christmassy flavours. And then the final thing is some alcohol. I'm going to be using sherry. I've got some lovely Oloroso sherry. You can use rum and you can use uh, brandy. So it's entirely up to you, whatever you've got in your cupboard is fine. So I've got sherry, if you've got brandy or you've got rum, a dark rum, not like Bacardi. You want like a dark rum, then whatever you've got is fine. So that's everything for the mince meat. So for the, the only thing extra we're gonna need to make the mince pies is what we're gonna use for the pastry. So we'll need the butter again and then flour. Now I'm gonna be using spelt flour. You don't have to use spelt flour. I'm using spelt because that suits mine and Dan's tummy much better than normal flour. If you want to use just standard plain flour, that's absolutely fine. You'll need an egg and then an orange because we're gonna flavor the pastry, which is just lovely. So that's all of the ingredients 
I'll just mention the jars because we're going to be popping them into meat into jars. I've got four of these jars. This is like a jam jar size, so it's sort of 370 grams. I actually bought these jars from Boys if you're in the UK. They cost me a pound each, which is just brilliant. But really, if you've got jars that you've already used that had jam in or marmalade or whatever, it needs to be glass. Just reuse those and I'm going to tell you about how we sterilise these when we get to that portion. So there we go, that's everything we're going to need. I'm going to do a little bit of chopping and then we'll get over to the stove and we'll put all these together. among you might have noticed I missed out telling you about one of the ingredients I'm just too excited but, but basically I forgot to mention the sugar so the sugar is light muscovado sugar so it's this kind of sugar that looks like sand it has a lovely flavor so we've got the sugar right here right so we're now ready to sort of assemble this and all we need to do is you basically just put everything apart from the sherry so i'll move that out of the way into a pan on the stove so what i'm actually going to do to make sure i don't miss anything out because there's a lot of ingredients and it's easy to miss something i've got my recipe over here and i'm just going to tick things off as i put them into the pan so we start off with the currants in there you go and then we've got the raisins sultanas cranberries the mixed peel this will be a bit sticky so let's give it a bit of encouragement and then I've got the apple which I've peeled cored and chopped finely so that goes in and then we've got the butter almonds I actually uh, blitz these you can see they're quite tiny in the end I just thought I was just going to blitz them because it was just going to take forever so <laughs> I blitz them in like a little food processor so that's the almonds and then the sugar and now it's time for the spices so we want half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon this one oh, it smells amazing so a teaspoon of the mixed spice. And then the last thing to go in is we want the zest and the juice of a lemon. So first of all, I'll just zest it. I've got one of these microplanes, they're brilliant for zesting. It just gets off just the zest. You can see it just takes off that bright yellow. We don't want the pith that's underneath just the zest so just one sort of stroke of this and it takes it off and what I do to juice a lemon is I just basically juice it through my hand and that catches the seeds it saves having to get any sort of fancy juices no seeds so far none in that half do the other one so now what I'm going to do is put a heat underneath that and we need to heat everything up until the butter melts and also the sugar will dissolve and what that does is it will the butter and the sugar will coat everything that's in the pan and that will basically then help with the preservation when you put it into the jars so now you can see all that butter and sugar has melted and we get a kind of syrupy sort of substance forming on the bottom. So now we just need to let this sort of simmer for 10 minutes. Just stir it occasionally, we don't want anything to burn. 
So this has had 10 minutes now, just simmering away, and you can see it does look exactly like mincemeat. The white sort of flecks that you can see are the apple and the nuts. What happens over time is they will just darken in colour when it's been in the jar for a while. We still need to add our alcohol, but before we do that, this has to get cold. So just to speed up that process a little bit, I'm going to pop it over into a big bowl and then we will let it cool whilst we make the pastry. Okay, so for the pastry, all I'm gonna do is pop my flour into a nice big bowl, and then we've got the butter. This is nice and soft, so I'm just gonna pop it in and then I'll break it up with my hands. So all we're gonna do is we're just going to rub the butter into the flour. You can do all of this in a food processor if you want to. I never bother because it's so easy just to do it and it saves me washing up. And then we're just gonna rub it in. This is quite a, it's a pastry that's got quite a high fat content. So you might find that it's sort of, it doesn't seem to want to fully rub in, if you know what I mean, to the flour. But just keep going, and what you'll get is like this kind of sandy, rubbery look, which is what you want. Now this pastry is, it, it, essentially it's a savoury pastry because I'm not adding any sweetness into it. I think traditionally, you know, other people might want to use a sweet short crust pastry, in which case you would just add in a bit of icing sugar to make it sweet. But I find mince pies to be very sweet anyway, so I just prefer to keep the pastry plain. But if you wanted a sweet pastry, just add in maybe 20 grams, something like that, of icing sugar. So I'm now gonna get my orange and my lovely micro planer and just zest in the orange and this really oh it, it it does two things actually to the pastry it really makes it a really nice tender pastry i find but also it just gives it such a really nice flavor and it's so festive i think anything orange flavored is always festive so don't waste this orange you know after you've zested it peel it and you've got a little healthy treat ahead of your not so healthy treat when you have your mince pies. So I'm just going to get a knife now and just flick that orange zest through the pastry. It smells amazing. So now we need to bring it all together. I'm going to use egg to do that. We might not need it all. I've just got one egg in here that I've just beaten up and I'm just going to add in half maybe first of all and just see where that gets us. Mm, we're almost there with that. I won't need all of this egg. It really depends on your flour and you know your, your conditions in your kitchen and, and everything as to how much liquid you're going to use. That's going to be enough, I can tell. So you can see how it's coming together now into a ball. So get rid of my knife and then just bring it together with your hands. There we go. Don't mess around with it too much. Pastry doesn't like being messed with. So that's our pastry. I'm now just going to wrap it in some cling. And then that can go into the fridge for about 15, 20 minutes just to cool off. Okay, so our mincemeat is just finishing off cooling. Our pastry is in the fridge having a nice rest. So come back in part two, when we're just gonna finish off the mincemeat, adding the sherry in, and then we're actually gonna make the mince pies. So I'll see you back soon. Oh my goodness, that was so lovely. How gorgeous does that mincemeat look? Oh, this, it's the smells. It's like, it's like, I mean, the funny thing is with making the Christmas chutney, is that it's savoury, but it's sweet things. But mm. I think it's the vinegar and it's the spices it's the in the chutney yeah. that, that make it savoury. Yes. This, it's like the equivalent of the chutney, but with sweet stuff. Yeah, and it, the, well, you see, the thing I love about these the most is that they're not overly sweet. I find that 
mince pies you buy in the shops, the filling just is so sweet and just overly processed, I think. But these are just absolutely gorgeous. They really are. Well, I'm excited to see what they're going to taste like mm. later on. But what about, mm. what? I mean, we've not really rolled it out and filled them yet, but what about no. that spelt flour? Brilliant. I mean, let me tell you, it's a game changer, people. Yeah, yeah. It just, it, it, it had got to the point where we really couldn't go near pastry. No, and, and we haven't for months and months and months and months. And then you thought, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try it because I've been making spelt bread for Dan for, for quite a few months now. And you can easily eat spelt bread and it doesn't bother your tummy at all. It isn't gluten free, I'll say that. You know, I do say that actually when you watch him, but it's not gluten free. It's got gluten in. Yeah. So that's all I will say, you know, that just you should be aware that it has gluten in because everybody's different in terms of, you know, it, whether they can have gluten now and again and they're OK or whether they're just completely allergic. Yeah. There's different levels of it. Yeah. It, we're just sensitive to it, I would say. Yeah. Well, um, very. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But we're not allergic to it. It's not like, you know, we can never have it. So, But certainly the, the gluten that's in spelt, because we also have spelt pasta, and we're totally fine with that. And um, what, what's so great about the, the spelt pasta is you can have, a, you know, a, a proper sort of meal with it and not feel bloated. No, it doesn't. It's, it's not tremendous. heavy. It's a very light flour. You know, when whenever I've used it for bread and when I've made it now with the pastry, it's very light and that that feeling of lightness transfers when you eat it, you yeah. Because it doesn't sit heavy at all. No. It's really brilliant. And I'm unbelievably excited to see how these turn out mm. later on in the show. Mm. Will they be gorgeous? Will they? Will they taste great? Mm. All will be revealed now. Is the moment to just touch for a second on? We said at the top of the show that we've turned our attention to our Christmas production this year. Yes. As we've already seen with the advent calendar and as you've now seen in Kay's Handmade Christmas because what we wanted to do is we wanted to have a close look at the music that we were using and so enter my brother who we asked to create something special yeah we were actually thinking more for Kay's element Kay's proportion of the advent calendar yeah but we loved it so much we just knew as soon as we heard it this mm. was the theme tune to Kay's Handmade Christmas. It's so beautiful. Oh my goodness, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It's called Hark, this version, this arrangement, and he picked it for so many reasons, but one of the big ones was, is of course the hymn which is being attempted to be played. Well, not more than attempted. She's doing a wonderful job. Jimmy Stewart's daughter in oh, It's yes. a Wonderful Life. Yes. And it just was, the, the, the brief that I gave him prior to him producing this track was, I said, I, when I listen to this, I want to feel like it's 1990, the snow is coming down, and I'm walking through Central Park at Christmas with Meg Ryan. <laughs> and let me tell you, I, it's just that beautiful. is what I was thinking of when I heard it. You know, it. when he sent it through, he did it for, I didn't, I, I actually, when we asked him, because he's so busy, and I didn't expect really, that he'd be able to find time to do it. And he totally did. You know, he did the whole arrangement of it and he played, you know, the instruments on there. And it's just so beautiful. And he sent it through. And I I think I'd just come out of the shower one night and you were like, oh, Dom sent that music through. I'm like, oh, let me see. And he said, right, put your headphones on. So I put the headphones on to listen to it. And I was just literally in tears just listening to it because it's just so beautiful. Oh, it's just amazing. So we really hope you enjoyed it. And I sent him through the, uh, the, the the episode of Case Handmade ah. Christmas, the gold edition that goes out to our gold and platinum patrons. Yeah. I, I sent it through to him, and I said, "Oh, this th th here it is. It'll be the debut of Hark. It's coming out on Friday." And then I put, "Do you know what? You're actually quite talented." <laughs> They very much enjoy rib ribbing each other, don't you, you and yes. Dom? Yes, we yeah, do. Yeah. We have a very similar uh, sense of humour. And he also has ginger hair. Well, he has ginger hair. I have strawberry blonde He hair. used to have ginger hair. I think it's now more grey. pretty much sort of blonde. Well, it's, yeah. it's more blonde, is cool. isn't it? Because ginger people, I yeah. don't think, go white. I think they go blonde. Or is it that the grey is equally proportioned between what's left of, <laughs> oh, of the orange, well, which makes the be. hair look blonde. Uh, maybe, but it does just seem to have faded to a blonde or grey. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with me because it is coming through at the temples. It is, yeah, you're yeah. more grey, yeah. What? 
It is more grey. I'm I'm not bothered. I've got grey too. I'm not, you know. <laughs> Look. <laughs> There's still so much more to enjoy in case yes. Halloween Christmas, and that's coming up later on in the show. Now it's time for us to find out, Kay Jones, what's off your needles? So the first thing I finished is these socks that I was working on last time. The kind of festive -y socks. I finished them and I just love them. They seem to fly off my needles, these socks. Oh, aren't they lovely? That yarn's perfect. Aren't they just lovely? I mean, it is absolutely perfect. What is that yarn? This is the Grundle ah, Hot Socks Grundle all the way. Diamond. And this is the base I couldn't get any longer. This is definitely softer than the Sakura. Right. So, you know, I'm not sure, it, it, you know, I think there's more Merino in this. I think right. the Sakura, I don't think that's Merino or not as much Merino. Right. So I've got two nice chunks of leftovers. So again, I'm going to save these maybe for some mitts and just do a contrast cuff and cuff top top and bottom. Really lovely. I, I, I don't know if you can get... I bought this years ago. I'm not even sure whether you can still get it. I don't think you can find the diamond anymore. Um, but occasionally you might be able to. And I just really love them. And I used a pink Regia for the heels and toes. And I just think they're really lovely. So I think I might keep these. I really like them. What's so cool about these socks is that, the, I mean, the pink really works. It, it was the, the pink, perfect choice. The pink really works, I think, yeah. And I think sometimes people steer away from it, mm. thinking, oh, no, 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 that's not gonna work, when you're combining it with something like this. But it works so well because there seems to be hints of it yeah, I think all down this, the sock. This, this beigey colour does, you know, it's, it's a quite a warm beige. And I think when you've got the, the reds yeah, and really yeah, like a dark yeah. pink, it feels actually like the underlying mm, hue mm, of this whole yeah, sock is yeah, pink. I think so. And it lifts it too. It does, it does. If you'd gone dark, yeah. it would have looked a bit grungy. Maybe. And yeah, these maybe. are just great. So you're keeping these for yourself? I might do, yeah. I might keep these for myself. Because Bryony tends to like the hand hand dyed yarn. It's a little bit softer, isn't it? She's That's hilarious. I don't know, she might want these. I'll show them to her later and see see what she says. But I, you know, she does get a lot of socks. She likes the really good stuff. <laughs> well keep them for yourself. So I might keep these for myself. I think that Make nice. the decision. If you want them, you should keep them. Yeah. Maybe I will wear them in the house on Christmas Day or something. That might be really nice. So they're all finished. And then I finished another pair of socks. Now these, these are, are really exciting. Epic. I think I've only showed you these once when I first started them. But I've done them now. I finished Dan's brown socks. Cleveland brown socks. I'm showing you the side with the jog. Let's like show you the pretty side. It's funny how often that seems to happen. Yeah. Not just you. It's me as well. They're so just they're all amazing. Aren't I they want to cool? see them. It's the first time I've touched them properly. It is. It's the first time I've touched them. Look at those babies. Aren't they cool? The colours are perfect. And uh, you did the colours. I did the colours. Yeah, I've got loads left. It's like... <sighs> I've got loads left of the orange and the brown. So that's nice to have. And it's got sparkling. I mean, no, you would never think, would you? You would think, maybe it's just me. But you just think sparkle and a dude. Is this going to work? Oh, I don't see why not. Now, now I'm... I'll wear anything. Yeah. Wouldn't I mean I really would. I'm I'm really not bothered. No. But even I was a little bit like, oh. And then I just went, do you know what? Go oh, for it. Oh yeah. Uh, the only reason it's on the sparkle base is because that's all I had in at the time. I only had sparkle yarns and I asked you. And I said, Do you mind if it's on sparkle yarn? You're like, no. So went for it. And I'm so glad that she did because I think that what it does is it turns what would have been I mean, it's a lovely tonal yarn. It's a beautiful, yeah, I mean, like, it is. You can see it more in the orange. It, I'm really pleased with how lovely and tonal. That's chocolate orange, that is. Yeah, it is a little bit, isn't it? It does look a bit like a chocolate orange, actually, chocolate orange. Did you write down how you did these colours? No. <laughs> no. I didn't do that. Sorry, I have no clue. So, when do I get to wear these? Now. Wow. You can have them, they are. Maybe this will bring some luck. Oh, we don't, we're not going to talk about last week's football because none Look, of our favourite teams did very well. All I'll say about the Cleveland Browns is I would like, if it's possible, to go back to the time 
when there was no expectations. <laughs> and that's how it's been since they came back as an expansion team. There was no expectations. So when they won, it was epic. Mm. And when they lost, that's what you expected anyway. Now, it's all media driven. Mm. And it's like, mm. they make you think, oh no, it's going to be great. When actually, if you actually stop and you look, yeah, they've got a few good players, but in key areas, they haven't. So, mm. Don't th- expect too much. And they were were they missing Nick Chubb again? Or? Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt oh, and Demetri Felton. But but last week the Arizona Cardinals were missing Kyler Murray, yes. DeAndre Hopkins, yes. and AJ Green, yes. and they still won famously. Yeah. But they lost. Good teams. They lost their, their most recent game. They did. They did. Well, the, things caught up with them because the backup quarterback about was playing again. Mm. Good teams find a way to win. It's as simple as that. I Winners look, win. Look, I look like in Monsters Inc. Yes. What was it? Twenty two nineteen or yeah, twenty two nineteen, twenty two nineteen. <laughs> That's really funny. And I, I. It would be cool. I found out what twenty two nineteen was. Oh yeah, isn't it like all the alphabet are given numbers or something? Is that right or not? Twenty two. What are the letters of twenty two nineteen? Twenty two nineteen. Yeah, it's too much to oh, work out yeah. now. We'll work it out. And we'll tell you what it is once we've watched the second part of, of yeah. Kay's Handmade Christmas. Because we need to put together these gorgeous, thank you very much, these gorgeous mince pies. We need to cook them and then we need to eat them. So without further ado, let's get our Christmas hats on and return for the second part of Kay's Handmade Christmas. to part two of Kay's Handmade Christmas. Now we're all ready now to start putting together our delicious mince pies. Our mince meat is now lovely and cooled so we just need to finish that off. We're going to get the pastry out of the fridge and then we're going to roll it out and make our mince pies. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is just finish off our mincemeat by adding in the sherry, in my case. So this is now nice and cold. I've got 200 millilitres of sherry here. That's what the recipe calls for. I'm not going to add all of this because I like the flavour of alcohol in mince pies, but sometimes it can be too much. So I'm just going to add about half of this. So the reason I've measured out this much is just to show you what the recipe calls for, but I'm just going to use about half. So just, just pour it in until I'm down to about 100 mils. There you go. And then just give that a really good mix. You won't, I mean, don't worry about the fact that you're putting alcohol into this. The cooking process will burn off the alcohol and it just leaves the flavour behind. Oh, now it smells like Christmas, my goodness. And that also just slackens off the mixture a little bit. So give it a really good stir. Now, what we would normally do now is pop these into clean, sterilised jars. To sterilise the jars, what I did was I washed them in hot soapy water, rinsed them, and then popped them into an oven, which was about 150 degrees C, for about 10 minutes. And the lids, I just rinsed in boiling water, just let them soak in boiling water, and then just left them to dry. So the jars are nice and sterilised, but they are a bit hot at the moment because they're fresh from the oven. So because I'm going to be using some of this straight away, what I'm going to do is I'll leave it in the bowl, I'll use what I'm going to use for the mince pies, and then we will put it in the jars once the mince pies are in the oven. Right, so now it's time to roll out our pastry. So I've got it out of the fridge here. It's nicely chilled. I'll just mention the tin, actually, that I'm going to make the mince pies in. I mean, in this country, we would call it a mince pie tin. I'm not quite sure of the definition of it, but it's, they're quite shallow. It's not like a muffin tin. Muffin tins are too deep. 
up. I like, you know, your mince pies traditionally are not as deep as a, a muffin tin. It's the ones that are quite shallow. You make jam tarts in these, mince pies, things like that. So, and it's a 12 hole tin. You don't need to butter it because we've got a high fat content in our pastry so it shouldn't stick at all. And I've got a few cutters here. I've got a large cutter to make the base of the mince pies. And then for the top, I've got a small one and I've also got a little of heart shaped one. I thought that might be nice to top them with. So first of all, we need to roll out the bases of our mince pies. So what I'm gonna do with the pastry is, I'm gonna cut the pastry and save a smaller amount for the tops because that won't take as much pastry. So I've just got a spatula here. I'm gonna cut it so that I've got maybe sort of just over a half here and then the rest on the other side and that should be about right. So keep that bit wrapped up so it doesn't dry out. And then we're going to roll out our base. I mean, if you have pastry left over, you can just use, start using that for the tops anyway. So it's fine. So I'm just gonna put a rolling pin. Make sure you've got plenty of flour underneath. We don't want it sticking. And then I always just sprinkle a bit on top. Make it into roughly a round. Doesn't have to be exact. And then just start rolling. And I just do rolls and then turns like that. And that keeps it sort of roughly circular. And just keep going until it's nice and thin. We want a nice thin pastry. I can't bear, <laughs> this is a personal thing, but I can't bear mince pies that have a really thick pastry. Because what happens is, well, two things. You, you never really get a crisp pastry, I don't think, if it's really thick. But also, you want that nice sort of division of flavours you you want all the pastry is doing really is encasing the mincemeat you don't want it to overpower the flavours that are going on within the mince pies I like it nice and thin and then that way you get that crispness and it's just such a lovely contrast to the rich interior of your mince pie so I'm just going to keep going until this is nice and thin so I'm now going to cut out the bases. The best way of doing this is to get your cutter and just sort of dab it into a bit of flour and then that way it won't stick when you cut and do that after each time you cut. And I'm just going to go over it and let's see how many we can get. I'm not sure entirely how many mince pies I'll get out of this quantity of pastry but I can let you know and then if needs be you can just sort of multiply up your amounts when you make the pastry if you want to make more. So just get them really close together, you know, be as economical as you can in terms of placement, you know, don't do one like that and one like that. Do them, go round, I tend to sort of go around the edge and squeeze as many on as you can. Because we are going to re-roll this pastry, but I don't really like to re-roll it too much because it can get tough if you overwork it. So we can fit one right in there, look, and go as close as you can over here. So now we just need to, what I tend to do, the easiest way of getting them off your work surface is slide under a palette knife like that and then take them straight over and just pop them into your tin. I'll push them down properly in a second but I just like to get them all over there. Can you see how lovely and thin that pastry is? I'm going on about the thinness a lot aren't I? So we will definitely get 12 here because that's 10 on the first roll. So I'm just gonna re-roll out for the other two. And all you do then is you just push it gently down. And you can see these are gonna produce really nice sort of smallish mince pies. I just like that kind of size. It means, actually, that you can have two and not feel bad about it. So that's all 12 of our bases, and what I'm gonna do now is just take a little fork and I'm gonna prick the bases. And this just means you'll get a nice crisp base because it'll let the air come out. I'm using a little pastry fork here that you would normally eat, you know, little dainty cakes with because the prongs of it are really nice and sharp and small and it just works perfectly for 
stab it in your pastry. So what I'm going to do now before I put the mincemeat into the pies is I'm just going to get all my tops ready. So I've still got this piece of pastry left from the bases here so I'm going to start cutting the tops out with this and then I'll roll out the extra bit and do the rest of the tops. So what I will do is I'll do six. In fact what I'll do is I'll do a variety just so you can see the difference. I've got a slightly bigger top here that will actually cover the mince pie entirely. I've got a smaller one which will leave the mince meat peeking out and then a love heart. So I'll do a variety. So I'm going to carry on rolling and cutting out the tops of our mince pies and then it'll be time to fill them and get them in the oven. Okay, so we've got all of our tops cut out. Our oven is preheating. So that's preheating now at 180 degrees C and in there I've got like a baking sheet that is also preheating and we're going to put our tray onto that already hot baking sheet and then straight away you get heat going up the the bottom of your mince pie and that should make it nice and crispy hopefully no soggy bottoms so now it's time to put in some mince meat so i've got my huge bowl <laughs> of mince meat here that we've just lovingly made and i'm gonna put in uh, about a teaspoon or so yeah, that looks about right to me. So a nice teaspoon into each of your pies. It's so lovely to be filling them with mincemeat that you've actually made yourself. It feels, oh, I feel very sort of, I don't know, what's the word? You might find that your mincemeat sort of bubbles up whilst the mince pies are cooking. Don't worry if it does. You know, they'll still taste lovely. And at the end of the day, they're not gonna go in the windows of Betty's, are they? They are gonna be eaten with much glee in your own homes. So now we can pop our tops on. So you can see some of them will just sit like that. So let's do the four. Let's be pretty, shall we, and do the four with the small round tops down there. So what will happen is you, your mincemeat will bubble up over that, but I just really like the look of that. They look very homemade, and that's never a bad thing. Love hearts down the middle. And then fully covered, you can see, what you do with fully covered ones, or what I do, is just tuck it down like that. Try not to get your fingernails down there. So just tuck it down to seal it. Now the ones that we're fully covering like that, I'm gonna get my little fork and I'm just gonna prick them so that we're gonna let out the steam. These ones don't need that because we've obviously got gaps around the side. So the last thing to do before they go in the oven is to give them a little glaze. I've just got the rest of the egg here that was left over from making the pastry and uh, these pastry brushes are my favourite. It's like one of these silicon ones. I just find they're brilliant. So just give the tops a little glaze with the egg and this will make them lovely and golden brown. You can use milk if you want. I always, in the olden days, let's say, I always glazed things with milk because it was... In this case, I've got leftover egg, but it's quite a glamorous thing to use a whole egg just for glazing the tops of things. So I always used to just use milk. And then the ones that I've got it all on. Just, just a bit much on. And now they're ready for the oven. So pop them into that preheated oven, 180 degrees C, for about 15, 20 minutes. Keep an eye on them, we don't want them to burn.
Okay, so whilst our mince pies are cooking in the oven, I'm just gonna put the rest of the mince meat into the jars. These are cooled down now. Whatever you're putting into your jars, if for example this was hot, I would want the jars to be hot. Because this is cold, I've let the jars cool down. But these have been sterilized, and I've got the tops over there, which have also been sterilized. So I'm just going to give this one final mix, and then we'll pop it into the jars. This amount should make about four jars. Now I've used some of it already so let's just see how much we get so just as long you know you find to touch the outside of the jar obviously so just pack it in and these would actually make brilliant gifts for people if you've got a friend who likes to bake perfect gift just make sure, if you are going to give them as gifts, just, I would always just make sure you write on the label that you stick onto there what the ingredients are, just so people know what's in there. So now all you need to do is screw on your lid. And that's your jar of mincemeat already. So I'm going to finish off jarring up my mincemeat and then it should be about time to see if the mince pies are ready. I've got one with a love heart on and I've got a bit of cream. This is extra thick double cream in case you were wondering what it was and it's time to taste. I'm so excited. The pastry is feels lovely and crisp. What I'll say about this pastry before I taste it because we have had it before is that it, it's really, it's honestly really, really delicious. It's made with the spelt flour, as I mentioned earlier, and I find that it makes fantastic pastry. Spelt flour in general is very light. It does contain gluten, so it's not for gluten intolerant people. We're not gluten intolerant, it's just the suits our tummies better. But it's much lighter, and definitely with pastry, it doesn't feel heavy at all, so let's try it. Got a bit of cream, homemade mincemeat. Mmm! Oh, it's delicious! Oh, I want some more! Oh, it's really yummy. It tastes like a really, really fantastic quality mince mincemeat. It's gorgeous. The pastry, I've got to say, is the absolute star of the show for me. It's crispy, it sort of melts in your mouth and it's really light. We find that it doesn't sit heavy on you at all and it means, you know, we can eat mince pies at Christmas and not worry about it. It's fantastic. It's absolutely delicious. Now, the last thing I want to say is, by all means, use your mince meat as gifts. Give them away if you want to do that, but save one of the jars because you're going to need it in a later show, that's all I'm gonna say. So I hope you all enjoy making and eating, most importantly, your delicious mince pies, and I will see you next time for more of Kay's Handmade Christmas. Now that was beautiful. Oh my goodness, do you know what? I just feel like yummy. everything's gonna be fine now. Oh, you're gonna take so us by the hand yummy. and you're gonna lead us to Christmas day. Oh, I'd really love somebody who says they don't like mince pies to try making their own mince meat and making their own mince pies. Honestly, I, I think I that- I can't imagine <sighs> anyone not liking them. The only person who I would say don't make these, is someone who's previously made mincemeat mm. and their own pastry yeah. and eaten one and said, I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. If you've done that before, don't make Fair them. Fair enough.
anyone who has not done that, I'm telling you, trust me. So delicious. So the amount delicious. of people who come to us years ago, and actually it's coming out as part of our advent calendar this year. Years ago, I'm talking like five years ago, Kay put out What's in Your Oven, and you made Christmas chutney, mm. and a special edition, because we're currently re-releasing all of those. We're re-editing them, making them look gorgeous, and putting in the, the recipe and the ingredients and all of the bits and pieces in the show notes, and it's coming out as part of our advent calendar this year, the Christmas chutney. The amount of people that have messaged us through the years and said that has become mm. a Christmas mm. staple, mm. and that is full of fruit. It's full. It is. Of all the things. I think things. a lot of people say they don't like the dried fruit element of it. But um, this is not like eating a handful of raisins. No, no, no. This becomes it's, something... You know, it's like, it's Sumptuous. Soft and, and, and it's not... It, you can identify what's in there. A lot of bought mince pies, it just looks like a lump of brown stuff, doesn't it? If you like sweet things, if you like pastry, mm. if you like cream... Make these, you'll yes. thank us for it. Yes. And it will become part of your special Christmas. The yes. other thing as well is I would I'd so strongly say to you, make them with spelt flour if you can get it. If you can get it, it's, it's quite Doesn't easily matter if available it's the other flour. here. It's no problem if it's the other flour. Give, give spelt flour a go. But mm. if you can get spelt flour, try it, because mm. spelt flour is crisp and light, and I wouldn't go back. No, the, the pastry is so nice. It really is. It's just, like you say, it's crisp. And I think you could hear how crispy it was when I was eating, yeah. actually. Because I watched it back and I'm like, I can hear myself, you know, with the pastry. It's They're just so yummy. And we've, we've had them. We've still got some left. Thank goodness. But we had some yesterday, didn't we, after our lunch? And might be having some today, too. And what was so lovely about that episode was, not only did you get something delicious for your festive table, but you also created some gifts. Yeah. That you can stick a ribbon around and you can give to your... Nearest and dearest. Mm -hmm. Remembering, though, to keep hold of one of those. Do they just yes. have to keep hold of one? Just one jar. Keep hold of one jar. Because later in the series, Kay's going to be making something else mm. with gorgeous mincemeat that perhaps you wouldn't expect, because I certainly wouldn't expect what you're Maybe making. Maybe not. Maybe no, not. definitely yeah. not. Yeah. But next episode, I'm like, I'm so excited. So excited. Because it is, I mean, these things are like my favourite things. Yes. Yes, yes. But also as well, Oh, it's the one after you're doing some crafty business. Yes. Yes, in the final episode. In the final episode, there's a little bit of crafty something going on as well as baking. We yeah. told you this was going to be a good series. Oh, yes. So more to come from Kay's Handmade Christmas when we see it in two weeks with our very next video show. Right now, though, it's time for the Andy Bits. Andy Bits. Now, you've bought some lovely stuff. Now, I have. I've bought a couple of skeins of yarn. I've I've bought yarn from this dyer before, but it's it's quite difficult sometimes to catch the updates, I think. But I just saw one and I thought, oh, I'm gonna go and have a look. And it's Olan, and they are a dyer based in Ireland. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna go, go and have a look at their website and see what's there. And I bought a couple of skeins. I bought one that was sort of Dan coloured and one that was K coloured, if you like. Now, unfortunately, one of them, they haven't written on the colourway name and I can't remember what it was. I need to go onto the website and double and check it. And hope it's it. still there. Uh, well, I'm sure it will be. I just need to double check what it is. But yeah, it's Olan and I bought these two lovely colours. So the blue one is obviously so blue, Dan coloured. <laughs> yeah, the blue one is called Petri Chore. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Petri Chore. It's got all these gorgeous shades of blue and brown in there. It's really pretty. Very sea sort of colours, aren't they? Now, that's not going to be pool, is it? Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Then the other one is this shade, which there's no... They've forgotten to write on the... <laughs> The shade name, so I need to go onto the website and the check. The colours are gorgeous. I mean, the, the colours are gorgeous. Everything's perfect. Yellow and pink, and you know, a bit of purple coming through there, and a bit of brown. Really, really pretty. Now I don't know if these are going to pull. I, I don't think I've knit. I'm pretty sure I haven't knit a pair of socks, for example, with Olan. I have had another skein previously, but I used it in various different things. I had a skein called Obelisk. I think that was their yarn, but maybe it wasn't. But anyway, I definitely haven't knit these into socks. So I don't know whether these are going to pull. And I'm I'm going to be recording at some point 
I can't remember when, but it'll probably be for the new year. You're recording it in December. But it'll come out in the new year. And it's coming out in early January. Yeah. I'm doing a little... Tutorial's the wrong word, but I'm doing a little video about pooling yarns and how to tell in the skein if they're going to pull, if there's a possibility they might pull. And then I'm just going to test the theory out with a few yarns. So I've got these from Olan, I've got another dyer that I bought recently and just a few from my stash. So I'll be talking about the whole pooling business and flashing and things like that. What's going to be great, and I think, about this tutorial is whether you like pooling or not, whether you like flashing or not, mm. what this will do is it will enable you to look... To have more of an idea, I think. What you're going to get it, when you buy it and Yeah, I mean, it, it does often mean that you have to take it out of the skein and unfurl it, which people in the shop might not want you to do. I don't know. Um, you'd you have to ask them before you yeah, did that, obviously. Yeah. But it does mean, it's difficult to tell, because skeining up a skein of yarn, I'm not saying this yarn is going to pull at all. I don't know if this yarn is going to pull. But so when you skein up a yarn, it can hide a lot of things that's going on in there. So you really do need to unfurl it and have a look at it to have an idea. I do anyway, have an idea if it is, there's a chance that it's going to pull. It's a really sort of, sub, not subjective, but it, it varies such a lot with every knitter and every project. But I'll go into this when I do the sort of little video. But I will be using, you know, one of these yarns, I think, just to test, test out what's going to happen with them. But they're really beautiful and a good price, a really good price, I thought, these as well. So, I mean, go and have a look at their site. And they came from Ireland to me here in about a week, which I think is good. That's great, really. Yeah, Southern Ireland. Goodness. Yeah. They're in um, Cavan, Cavan, C A V A N. That's the county, I think. Yeah. County Cavan. Folks, have you heard our latest radio show? Oh, yes, it's available right now. And actually, our next episode of the radio show, which comes out, you know, with our radio show, our patrons can access the episode one week, well, it's two weeks early. So they get the episode earlier than it goes out on release two to Two every... weeks earlier. Yeah, because we really. Well, we release a radio show every two weeks. Yeah. So on the Friday that we release a radio show, the world gets the last one that we released. Oh, right. And our okay. patrons get a new okay. one. Okay, right. Yeah, okay. so it's two weeks ahead I of time. I get that, yeah. But I think it's our next one. We're going to be talking about Christmas movies, our favourites, and also our not-so-favourites. Mm. And that's coming out next Friday. So don't miss that. It was a really interesting conversation. We try and drill down on our five favourite Christmas movies of all time, and I'll give you a spoiler, the Christmas card is one of the five. <laughs> so what are the other oh, four? Yes. Tune into the show to find out. Oh, yes. Our next pop show is going to be an absolute cork. It's our final live show of the year. It's coming out on the 28th of November, and it's going to be available to watch at 2pm Greenwich Mean Time. And the recording will be at 10 past 3 Greenwich Mean Time. It will feature another crafter's question time. So if you've got any burning questions about your crafting that you would like to ask, problems you're encountering or just general questions, it could be about anything to do with crafting, come along to crafter's question time. If we can't answer the question, as we found out in our first mm. crafter's question time, which came out in our October pop show, the audience most definitely could help. Yes. It was tremendous, it actually. It was brilliant. I mean, such a yeah, great and really sort of great. interactive and, and fun thing to do. Such a vast array of knowledge over yes. everyone. Yes, over the community. It's marvellous. Yeah, it's fantastic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a lot is going on in the next two weeks, like a crazy amount. And one of the things is, as we discovered at the start of the show, the commencement of the Baker Bears advent calendar. So the next time we see you, the it Baker Bears... Started. It will have started. That's madness, that isn't is it? Totally, that is crazy. Totally insane, because I've got 99% of it to edit we will have all between now and then. We will have then. all opened the first couple of days of our Yarny advent calendars as well. Which Craziness. Which is amazing. I'll Craziness. talk about what I'll have next time. Yes. So remember, like we said at the start of the show, if you want to join us for this year's Christmas festivities, sign up now as a silver Baker Bear patron for the equivalent of five US dollars a month you can get access to the Baker Bears Advent Calendar 2021. I've just remembered something I want to mention. Go for Have it. Have we got time? Yeah. I just want to just talk about Advent it just made me think of something and because we're going to I'll be revealing this thing on the next show but if you've purchased 
a advent calendar from Sherry Iris this year. You will find in day one of the advent calendar, you will find a pattern from me. Woohoo! This, this pattern, Sherry asked me a number of months ago if I'd like to work with her on this. And I was like, yes, <laughs> I would love to do that. So I've created this pattern, which will be, like I say, it's included in day one of the Sherry Iris advent calendar as part of the calendar. You don't pay extra, you get it as part of the advent calendar. But I will also be releasing the pattern for general sale on the 1st of December. So, my goodness. So there'll be a Next new... Next time we see you, new pattern release. There'll be a new pattern release. I'm not going to say anything else about it because I would like it to be as much of a surprise for all the people that have purchased her advent well, calendar. Well, it's going to be a surprise for everybody. Yeah, I've, kept, I've just kept it completely secret. It's the first time I'm mentioning it. And how funny is that? I know Sh Sherry has mentioned it publicly that there will be a pattern from me. So, um, you know, it's, it's out there. But you, you might not be aware. You might have missed that. So that's really exciting. So I'll be revealing a new pattern next time and you will be able to purchase that pattern if, you know, you didn't get an advent calendar from Sherry. You'll still be able to buy the pattern. Wonderful. So yes, exciting. If, if you're going to be wondering what we're doing over the next two weeks, it's going to be an awful lot of filming yes. and an awful lot of editing. Lots and lots of all of that. <laughs> Already for the best Christmas ever. We might ever. be a bit delirious yes. by the end. Oh yes. <laughs> Folks, that's it. That's the end of this wonderful episode of the Becker Bears video show. We will see you in two weeks. Thank you everybody. For another wonderful Kay's Handmade Christmas. Yeah. But between now and then, take care of yourselves. Take care. Have a um, good Thanksgiving. Yes. If all you're celebrating people, Thanksgiving. Yep. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And we'll see you, hopefully, on the 1st of December yes. with the very start of the Baker Bears Advent Calendar 2021. See you soon. Bye. Enthusiasm's not quitting for They'll take you to fabulous places of which they're in a castle watching the bakery bears. It never feels like a hassle to sit and watch the bakery bears. What's on your shelf or what's in your oven or maybe a show you'll want to wear. So sit yourself right down